Hello and welcome back to the Django admin series. So previously in this series, we installed Summonite, which was a Markdown editor. So I take you through, took you through that process of installing and having a little look at how to actually apply it to your application. So if you want to have a look at that, have a look at the previous tutorial in this series. This tutorial has two steps. So first of all, we'll just go through the basics of creating uh, simple filters for your Django admin area. And then we'll go ahead and build a simple custom filter. So I'll just give you the basics uh, so that you can start to kind of play around with filters and build your own filters. So let me just familiarize you with the model that we're going to use for this tutorial. Uh, so we're going to bring in models as per normal so we can build some models. And then also we're just going to create a one to one connection between the user model, the Django user model and the new model that we're going to build. So we're just going to extend from the user model. So I created a, a new class called profile and then we've gone ahead and created some role choices that we utilize shortly. That will create a, an option field. So we're going to first of all, create a one-to-one -one field. Um, you, you can see that we're going to connect the user table, the user model to this new model here. Uh, so it was a one-to-one -one connection. So that's going to allow us to extend from the user table. Um, and then we're just going to include the birth date uh, the role. And then we're just going to use our role choices here. And then we're going to have is active to see if the user is active on the system and then just create it at so that we can, so we know when the user was created. So you're probably wondering why I'm adding all this here because some of this is already within the user model. So this is just for demonstration purposes only. And we've got the updated at, and then I've set out a property, which I haven't actually explained before in a model. The property decorator is a built-in decorator for the property function in Python. This is going to give us kind of some special functionality to certain methods, which is going to allow us to kind of, in this case, get information. And then we can call this from, for example, our filters to return that specific piece of information. So here, for example, let's just, uh, in a simple example, um, we're going to call this function email, and then we're just going to return the user's email. So notice here, I'm kind of drilling down into the model here and then using the one-to-one -one link to then go into the user model, the main user model to get the email address. So that just returns that little piece of information there. Okay. So we just finish this off with a string done method here. So just return the user username. So again, notice that I'm following this path of the user using the one-to-one -one field to get the actual username from the user model, not from the profile model here, but where we're extending from the initial user model. Okay. So that was just something different that we've not seen before, uh, extending from the user model there using a one-to-one -one field. So I'll go ahead and just uh, migrate that. Okay, so I do apologize for the setup here. So I'm going to create a new user, a new super user. There we go. So that will just give us now access to the, to the admin area. Okay, so the admin area or admin filters. So now we've got some data here. You might imagine that we want to, at some point, run some filters over the user. Maybe we want to filter the users or the birth date or if they're active or not or so on. So a filter is going to allow us to filter out specific information in this case about the user. Now, obviously you can apply filters on any different model that you want to utilize filters on or wherever you, wherever you need to filter information. Now, this is just an example. There's no particular reason why I've selected this particular model. Um, I've just done it this way. Uh, so let's go over to the admin now. And this is obviously where we're going to create some filters. Right, so let's just uh, bring in the admin so that we can start to actually register our models to the admin and make some changes. So then we're gonna just bring in the model. So from the model, we're going to import the profile model. That's the model that we've just created. And then same process as before, we then create a new class, class sorry. I call this filter, and then we just extend from admin, so the model admin, so that we can make some changes. And then we're just going to list the display. So this is just a list of items that we're going to display. Now, this is where the property comes in. So here you can see that I've defined this property called email. 
Now in our filter here, you can see that I've defined email. So I'm calling it from the profile model. Um, I'm saying email, but notice that email isn't actually in the normal field set. So this property allows me to add additional information. Uh, in this case, we return the user email, and that's just going to allow me then to show additional information in my list display. Obviously this list display will be shown every time I make a new user. These are all the items that will be displayed about the user in the list. I'll point that out if you're not familiar with that in a minute. And then we go ahead and now we can set the list filter properties. So this is how to make a very simple filter list. What's going to happen here is we just need to define what we want to filter against. So for example, we want to filter whether the whether users are active or not. So we can do that. Uh, for example, the role that they have. So we can filter based upon the user's role. And then potentially here we have created at. So we can filter based upon when the user was created. So I specifically selected these three items here because by default, I guess these are the three things that Django can utilize to filter against. We have inactive, which if we have a look at the model uh, is going to be a Boolean field, so a true or false field. We have a row. This is going to be a drop down selection or a selection field um, that we're utilizing here. And then last of all, created at. So we can also filter based upon time and date. So for a simple filter, that's pretty much all we need. We'll go ahead and actually then register your new filter. Uh, so that's obviously going to take in the model. So we're registering a model and then this customization that we've just created. So now we can go ahead and access this in the admin area. So once you're in the admin area, we can select the new registered model, which was the profiles model. Now I've already gone ahead and created a new user. So what we have here is a user, I've added some items and obviously the profile is just extending the user. So we just need to extend by adding some more additional information. So let's just go ahead and add a new user, a standard type of user, uh, give it a password. Okay, so we'll just add an email address so we can filter by email. Oh no, we won't give them an email address. And then we can filter by email. Um, and then we just uh, save that. So then we need to go to profiles and add, add them on, standard. And then the role, let's make it a customer is active. Yep, press save. Okay, so if we go into profiles now, you see that we have all these different fields here. Uh, and these are obviously being collected because we've actually defined them here in the list display. Now, just showing you that property again, remember, in our model, we've got this property. We're returning the user uh, email. We've then selected it here. And you'll now see here, and we have email, which is then being utilized to display the email. So here we can select individual properties that we can then use within our display here. Now on the right-hand side, like we noticed before, we have our filter now, so we can select is active. So they are all active. So we can also select the opposite, no. So at the moment, we don't have any users that are not active. So this is a, a simple filter. Of course, at this point, you probably realize what's happening here. So uh, ID2 was a customer, so we can uh, filter for them. And obviously we have admins, so this user was an admin, so we can filter for them. And you notice here that today we have, well, any date, we only have one user. That doesn't look like it's working very well past seven days. Uh, so created at doesn't necessarily look like it's working here properly is a little bit strange. Uh, so um, the problem is here, potentially, is that you notice when I select a super admin and then past seven days, it remembers the fact it's a super admin and then the past seven days. So here we're kind of buddying up the filters. So for example, if I select no here, I'm filtering on by active role and created at all at the same time. So the filtering here does allow us to kind of buddy things up here uh, and run multiple filters. What's not necessarily useful is notice when I do actually select these, it isn't exactly clear exactly what I'm doing, although there is a, a little bit of highlighting here to kind of show me roughly what's going on, but it'd be nice if there was something a little bit more uh, visual. So you see here we can clear all the filters by selecting this item here, 
And that's pretty much how you're going to be utilizing the default filters in the Django administration area. So eventually you're going to outgrow this filter and you're going to want to start to build your own filters. So let's look at how to build a simple custom filter. So what we're going to build here is a list filter. So that's what we've been looking at so far. These are just lists. So we're going to build a filter that's going to provide us a list. So if we can sort the Django documentation, and this is a little bit tucked away, I'd say. If you were just to type in simple list filter into the Django documentation, it doesn't really take you to where you need to get to. Um, Google provides you a better result in actual fact. So you can see here that if we're going to create a custom simple list filter. Um, we inherit from the admin here. We need to provide a title. We need to provide a parameter name and a lookup and a query set. So that's what we need to set out to build our own custom list filter. Title, parameter name, lookups, and query set. So following that pattern, we are just going to create a new class. I'm just going to call this email filter. So nothing amazing here. I'm just going to create a filter to see if a user has actually created an email or not, or has actually um, inputted a f an email into their profile or not. So that's what we're going to create a filter for. Uh, so following the guide there, we're going to need title, parameter name, we're going to need lookups, and then the query set. So there we go. So that's the, the simple framework here that we're going to need to create a, a simple list filter or custom simple list filter. So probably the easiest one to describe is the title. So we're just going to call this a email filter. And then we're going to need a parameter name. So here it says decade and a parameter for the filter that can be used in the URL query. So we're going to need a parameter filter. So this is the parameter that we're going to use to filter against, I guess, in this case. So we're going to filter against the user. And then that's the user um, referring to the model here, user. And we want to go backwards because we want to find the actual email within the user uh, model, the actual user model. So we select the user from the profile uh, model. And then we go work backwards uh, because it's a one-to-one -one field. We go into the user model and then we select the email. So we know there is an email uh, field inside of that model there. So email. And now we need to find the lookups. So here we're going to have two parameters. Uh, so we're going to have, we're just going to describe, um, in this case, we're essentially what we're doing here is we're just going to be building here you can see we have all the parameters here. So these are going to be, I guess, what I would describe as the lookups. So we want to define what the user can press to actually achieve what they want to see in a, in a new list. So let's just uh, create something here. Um, we're going to need to have, for example, has email. And then, of course, we want the second item, which is when they don't have an email. So let's just call this no email. So just remember here, this is what essentially the system is using. This is what we, the, the readable version is going to be. So we could change this if we wanted to, um, as long as this parameter is correct here, the, the backend or the system is using. So uh, this is the human readable element right here. Well, that should be has. Okay, so now we've got that in place. Um, now we can set out the query set. So here, essentially, what we're going to be doing is building a query. So we need to query for the has email, and we're going to need to query for the no email. So essentially, a filter is just basically a query, right? So we're querying the database, and then we're going to return that data. So that's essentially what the filter is here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and now just build this simple uh, query set for this filter. So our first task is just to actually define what to happen if um, we don't press anything at all. Uh, so if we don't press any of, or we don't select anything, what's going to happen? Well, we're just going to return uh, the query set, the, the normal query set, right? There we go. So that's uh, the default option now set. So now we're going to say if uh, self value so self is going to allow us to kind of bring in the values from outside of this function into this function here. Uh, we're going to use 
uh, lowercase and that is going to say equals and then no email. Also, let's start with has email. So here we're going to connect this item here to this item here. Okay, so this is the reference point. Remember, this is a human readable um, used to actually display in the admin area, this text here. So we're going to say if um, has email, then we're going to return a filter set. So a return query set, and now we're going to run a filter. So what we want to do here, if they do have an email, then we want to actually uh, show the users that have an email. So let's do this by not using a filter. Let's just exclude anyone who doesn't have an email. I can write that exclude. Um, so if they don't have an email, they're going to be shown. So if they do have an email, they're going to be shown. If they don't have an email, they're not going to be shown, right? So we're just excluding the user that the user's email um, equals, well, nothing. So we can set this to null or just use this blank. It's going to, um, still going to appear. So if the user doesn't have an email, then when we press here, has email, it's going to show all the users that does have an email. Okay. And then we just need to define the other. So uh, no email. So self dot value again, lower. And this time it is no email. And now we're going to return, obviously, users that don't have an email. So this is going to be the query set uh, dot filter. And then we're going to say user, the double email um, equals, well, nothing at all. There we go. So now we have these two filters in place. So uh, we've connected it to our buttons, essentially, here, our lookups. And then we've defined the title and the parameter that we're kind of filtering on user email. So let's just give this a go. So it says here, simple list filter is not defined. Okay, so because we're using the simple list filter, we're going to obviously need to bring that in. So that's going to be found from the Django uh, contrib uh, admin. And then we're going to import it in. So simple list filter. There we go. So looks like the server's okay with that. So let's go ahead and have a look. So now when we refresh, nothing happens at all. <laughs> um, so we're expecting there to be a list here. Let's just make sure we're in the right area. Doesn't seem to be registered. Maybe that's the case. Okay, we haven't actually registered it. So uh, let's go back into the list filter. Obviously, we need to actually include it here, right? So we're going to call our new class it's called email filter. So let's put that in this list here. There we go. So we'll add it here. We can obviously put it anywhere we want. So if we want it up the top, we'd put it in first. So it's going to appear at the bottom here. And there we go. So by email filter. So that's obviously the name that we provided. So has email. So there's one user that does have an email. So if I select that, it shows the one user. If they don't have an email, I select no email. You can see it shows the other user that doesn't have an email. Okay, and there we have it. So creating simple filters, uh, utilizing the Django built-in filter system to give you some basic filtering. And of course, creating a custom filter. Hopefully you've seen how easy it is now to create a custom filter. You just need to think about those queries that you want to run um, to produce the data that you want to return. Okay, so this is just part one of filters. We could spend a whole year looking at filters. Uh, they're a very important aspect of your admin area once you start working in a particular way. And you, as, like I said, your needs grow uh, and your data also scales, you want to kind of filter different things. It becomes more important. So you can imagine the filters do become very complex um, or they can become very complex in the back end. So we will cover this again. We look at other different types of filters and make more complex queries and return different items. Um, there's definitely lots of other things we can talk about here in filters, but hopefully that was useful for you as a starter to filters. And hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.